Okay, let's go ahead and do example number one, where we predict the products of each reactant and write a balanced molecular equation. And if no reaction occurs, we want to write no reaction. So for A, we have magnesium chloride in the aqueous form. And remember, aqueous means any compound dissolved in water, okay? Just like, you know, your table salt, when you dissolve it in water, it's aqueous because um, it breaks down in water. All right, so remember the way that we want to do this is we want to do outside ones go together because if we look at these as A, B, C, and D, the AD have to go together and the CB have to go together or the inside ones. So magnesium, when we're writing this on the other side, just write magnesium with its charge, okay? Um, magnesium will be positive too because it's in group 2A. Then it hooks up with the carbonate, which is our D here, which is negative 2. All right? Now, when we do the crisscross rule for this one, do we have to, um, when we bring the 2 down here and then we bring the 2 down here, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So I don't have to do that because it has to simplify to the simplest whole number ratio. So that's how magnesium carbonate what looks like. And, and notice, when I write my final answer, I'm going to write it without my charges, okay? So, then my inside ones go together, the C and B here. So, C is lithium. Again, I'm not, I don't care about the subscript here, all right? First, I'm just going to write lithium with its charge of positive 1, okay? Actually, let me write that up here. So, lithium with a positive 1 charge, and now it's going to combine with chlorine and chlorine again I don't care about the subscript here I just want the charge because I have to reconfigure the subscripts so these are in a one-to-one -one ratio so there's nothing else that I need to do for that one okay next I look at my solubility chart and I notice that um, and I will provide the solubility chart for you on the um, exam um, next semester in uh, in uh, Gen Chem, you have to memorize them, but for now, I will just give them to you. And I find that magnesium uh, carbonate, the carbonates are typically insoluble unless they're hooked up to lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium. And magnesium is not one of those exceptions, so it's going to be a solid. And lithium chloride here is going to be aqueous because the chlorides are typically soluble unless they're hooked up to silver, mercury, or lead. And lithium is not any of those exceptions, so it is aqueous. Make sure you know how to read the solubility chart, okay? Sorry, this is just my um, hand making marks as I write. So, um, now I want to, so first I predicted the product. Second, I'm going to balance or um, or predict the uh, solubility of those products, what states they're in. Third, I need to balance my reaction. So I'm going to bring down the rest of my reaction here. And then I'm going to make sure it's balanced. I have one magnesium here, one magnesium here. I have two chlorines here, but I have one over here. So I'm going to put a two to offset that right there. So now I have two lithiums on the right and two lithiums on the right and notice I treat carbonate as one unit one carbonate on the left and one carbonate on the right so it is now balanced make sure you use you treat your polyatomic ions as one unit it really helps tremendously with balancing now in addition to this what I want you to know so we're kind of reviewing for the exam right now um, I want you to know things like what kind of reaction is this and we've discussed the four different reactions that you must become familiar with or you will not do well on this exam. Remember, there's one are PPT reactions or precipitation reaction. Precipitation reactions, basically, another word for a precipitate is a solid. Okay, so in the products, do you see a solid form here? Yes. So this must be a precipitation reaction. All right. Your second kind of reaction is your acid-base reaction. 
and remember your acid base reactions is basically um, an acid acid has H plus in it reacting with uh, so it'd be let's our H and then we'll call this X um, combining with let's say Y and the hydroxide so because this has an H in it it's an acid and because this has hydroxide in it it's a base right and for your acid bases you will always end up with water liquid water and a salt of some sort and when I mean salt I don't mean your table salt like sodium chloride it could be any kind of salt so lithium chloride is a salt so this is not an acid base reaction because we don't have an acid and we don't have a base and we don't end up with water and salt then you have your gas evolution reaction gas evolution reactions typically they will form a gas so do you see a gas here uh, you do not so this is not a gas evolution don't make it complicated if it's a gas evolution reaction there should be a gas in your product side all right gas on product side all right next you have redox reactions and redox reactions are oxidation reduction reactions remember and basically the way that you recognize a redox reaction is a special kind of case of a combustion reaction remember combustion reactions are a type of redox reaction and basically anything reacting with oxygen gas okay and then you can have usually metal and non-metal combined remember we talked about those in previous videos so that's a big clue that it's an oxidation reduction reaction or electron exchange and typically electron exchange is if you know suddenly you see um, a change in the charge of something as a matter of fact let me go ahead and do uh, this is not on your sheet but I'm gonna do it for you I'm gonna do an example of a redox reaction to help you out a little bit so we have magnesium we're doing this in the lab right now for my fundamentals people so this is magnesium chloride or I'm sorry let's see so we basically will have magnesium metal um, and it's solid and in the lab you'll actually see it as as a as a solid metal magnesium it's shiny silver remember we learned about the properties of metals and then we're gonna react it with hydrochloric acid okay now the charge on magnesium metal as it exists in nature will always be zero. This is neutral. It's solid magnesium, right? But then if you notice, there's something going on here. There's, uh, this is what we call a single displacement reaction. So the magnesium will come in and it'll kick the hydrogen out and take its place. So when it bonds to chlorine, the magnesium will pick up a charge. And so remember, this will be magnesium chloride when we do the crisscross rule and this is aqueous now the hydrogen will go float off by itself so the hydrogen is now h2 and it's in the gas form and remember your diatomics hydrogen will never exist as h it'll always be h2 in nature um, as a matter of fact there's trace amounts of hydrogen gas that you're breathing in right now and so that's always diatomic it never exists as H so and that's typically a gas right most of your diatomics are gases um, I won't you know be too rough on you on that but I expect you to know that hydrogen is a gas oxygen is a gas uh, nitrogen things like that your di diatomics are, again are typically gases anyhow so you see what happened here I'm just gonna rewrite everything and I'm going to balance my reaction. I need a 2 here because I have two hydrogens and two chlorines. Now this is balanced up. All right, so this is a redox reaction because this went from zero to charge when it was standing alone by itself. It was neutral. Now, what is the charge on magnesium when it hooks up to chlorine? It's magnesium plus 2. Okay, so that's a spec. See, now it picked up a charge. Therefore, um, there was electron uh, exchange so this lost electrons because it became more positive but the hydrogen here what was the charge on the hydrogen here it was positive one here H2 in the uh, in nature has got a zero charge so this went 
from positive 1 to 0, it means it gained the electrons. Whatever electrons were lost by magnesium were gained by hydrogen. So that's how you'd figure out a redox reaction. Now, something else that I wanted to tell you about is this, again, you heard me say this was a uh, single displacement. We can categorize reactions by what atoms do, and there's four ways to categorize those as well. So, um, we talked about double displacement, and we've seen the first example that I did was double displacement because we have A, B, and C, D, and then in the product we get this kind of swap, if you will, a wife swap. So A is now hooked up to D, and C is now hooked up to B, and I write C first because you have to write metal before nonmetal. Two is single displacement, and single displacement is where you have A react with BC. BC is bonded, and A comes in, kicks B out, and takes its place. All right? So this is kind of, you know, if you compare this to relationships, this is the sort of mistress idea, right? So I know it's silly, but it helps us kind of um, under, put things together, okay? So with that being said, I guess I ran out of space, so let's see. All right, so then you see A comes, kicks B out, takes its place, and B goes off by itself. Having said that, look at this reaction. Is this not a single displacement? Magnesium came in, kicked the hydrogen out, and took its place, all right? Then we have um, synthesis reactions, and synthesis reactions, basically, you have one product. That's your key point there, one product, and decomposition reactions, you have one reactant. The one reactant breaks down to two or more products. All right, so make sure you get this. So decomposition, just think about it. It's something decomposes and it breaks apart, right? Synthesis, something is made and you get one product. All right, let us go on to number two. Number B is sodium acetate in the aqueous form hooks up with KCl here, and what are we going to do? First, we're going to predict the products. This is acetate, so it's going to stay together. All right, so that's A, B, C, and D. Now, sodium has got a positive charge. It's going to hook up with chlorine, which has got a negative one charge. And that's a one-to-one -one ratio, so I don't have to do anything further. And when I look at my solubility chart, that's in the aqueous form. Second, my second product is potassium with a positive one, hooks up with acetate, which also has a negative one charge. So again, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. Oops. So I don't need to do any subscripts that. All right? So, again, I look this up and guess what? Acetates are always soluble. All right? And so, the third step now that I've predicted the products, I've predicted the states, I'm going to rewrite my equation down here more neatly with none of my charges shown. And I'm going to balance, but guess what? This is already balanced, so there's one sodium here, one sodium here, uh, one acetate here. See, I treat acetate as one unit, one potassium here, one potassium here, one chlorine here, and one chlorine here. So this is already balanced. Perfect. But now I want you to add to this. What kind of reaction is this in terms of single displacement, based on what the atoms are doing? Is this single displacement, double displacement? synthesis or decomposition. Well, we already did this part. You see how we did the swap, the wife swap, if you will. And so this is a double displacement reaction. Second, is this a precipitation reaction? Do you see a solid here? No. Is this a gas evolution reaction? Do you see a gas here? No. See, keep it simple. All right. Is this an acid-base reaction? In an acid-base reaction, you should have what? Um, 
An acid, is that an acid? No, because I don't see H in it. Is this a base? No, because I don't see OH in it. And anyway, your second clue is that you, sh should, you should have water as a product and salt. I don't see water here, so it cannot be acid-base. Is it a redox reaction? In other words, are we combine? Is it a combustion? Are we uh, combusting with oxygen? No. Are we combining metal with non-metal? No. Are we getting electron exchange? Not really, because this is positive one here, and it's still positive one here. Chlorine is negative one here, and it's still negative one here. So it's none of those. Which means if you do this in the lab, since both your biggest clue is this, both are aqueous. That means no reaction will take place. This is a boring one. So you will not see um, takes place, okay? So you see, you're not seeing a solid, you're not seeing a gas, and you would see gas in the form of bubbling. You're not really seeing much of anything here. Next, let's do HCl, which is perchloric acid, combines with barium hydroxide. And let us do the outside ones together. So H has got a positive charge, right? And OH has got a negative charge. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so we can write it as HOH. Recognize that this is water, but I still write it like that because it's easier for me to balance. Next, the barium has got a positive two charge. It's going to hook up with the perchlorate, which has got a negative one charge. So to do the crisscross rule, I need two of those, right? So my new product is barium perchlorate. perchlorate. So water, whenever you see water, just put liquid for me, okay? Whenever you see uh, something like this, you don't have the chlorates, but chlorates are typically soluble. All right, so next thing that we want to do, we want to balance the reaction. So I have one H here and one H here. I have, you see why I kept it that one H, don't count this, count this as a hydroxide, all right? Chlorate, I have one here and two here, so I'm gonna put a two. When I put a two here, I have to offset that with putting a two there. Now I have two hydrogens. Now I have one barium, one barium, and I have what? Two hydroxides, and look, there's two hydroxides. So I've kept it that way for a reason. And obviously, this is an acid-base reaction because this is acid, because it has an H in it. This is a base because it has OH in it. And we ended up with what? Water and a generic salt. So this is an acid-base reaction, and it is double displacement. Okay? These are the kinds of things that you must pay attention to on the exam. All right, and must you must know all these different reaction types.